What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, soul and body coach, Keisha Clark. <laughs> Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello, happy new year, and welcome <laughs> to Aligning Divine. I am Keisha Clark. We are on the Inspired Choices Network, and holy well, we're off to the races, friends. I hope your new year, your 2020, is off with uh, an amazing start and off to an amazing start, and that you're having fun with whatever's going on. Um, it seems to be a year that is going to be even more adventurous, let me say, than last year. <laughs> Although we don't have to make any year, you know, totally significant. I'm just kind of riding the energy waves and and uh, or surfing the energy waves to the best of my abilities. And I am aware that quite a number of us are doing uh, our versions of that. So. If that's going on for you, I just want to let you know it's all okay. It's all part of this reconfiguring and shifting and changing. And uh, what did we know when we chose to incarn uh, for this time space point on the map, so to speak? Um, what did we know and what did we bring and what are we actually capable of um, and what is this inviting us to? So that is very much a part of what conversation popped to uh, to be had today. And if it is your first time joining us, if it's your first time finding me or the network, um, thank you for finding us. Thank you for landing here for a little bit. If you have been here and you're coming back, thank you for joining us again. And thank you for all that you are contributing um, to these conversations whenever and wherever and however you're finding and playing with us. It is a massive contribution. And um, I love that we're actually called Inspired Choices Network. Uh, you know, <laughs> every everything is choice. We have choice for everything. And those inspired choices can be really fun. And I absolutely appreciate and enjoy getting to be a part of how being on this network and the way that I get to be a part of this network. Uh, if, in case you haven't heard me talk about this, I'm also a producer with Inspired Choices Network. And so I can actually say full heartily, fully heartily with a full heart, <laughs> however you want to say that, um, we have an amazing collection of hosts here. And the hosts are really showing up and bringing their hearts and their voices and their awareness to share with the world. And it is an honor to be a part of this team. So um, if you have not played with different shows and different topics on this network, I invite you to play with the podcast library. There are over 5,000 shows here on the network. And you can actually find us through all different kinds of platforms. So if it's easier for you to be on iHeartRadio or Spotify or Spreaker or iTunes, um, what is it, Apple Podcasts now or Google Podcasts or somewhere, you know, anywhere in the world. Deezer, I think, is another. We have over 50 platforms that you can actually listen to us live stream and find the podcast for the shows you want to see, or rather hear, I guess, because that's what a podcast is about. So thank you for doing that, however you're doing that, whenever you're doing that, and keep it up. <laughs> and that could actually be something that contributes to creating the year that you are really desiring to create, and maybe that you even know is actually possible. Some of these conversations just might contribute to that. You never know. And, wow, today, today's topic is a bit of a surprise <laughs> for me, um, which is actually kind of fun for me. Our shows, you know, I love when my show sort of uh, nudges me. <laughs> it's sort of like a version of tough love, or at least it feels that way <laughs> from my show. Um, this week's topic is portals, vortices, and thresholds. 
Yeah. Now, aligning divine, I mean, we can talk about that because really we have a broad spectrum of categories of aligning divine because we're really talking about and exploring and playing with everything that has to do with having the joy, or at least getting to the joy, sometimes it's a process, of lining up with your essence and living it every day. And that is um, that theme is really inviting me to do that even more in my life now. And so uh, when this topic showed up, I, I was kind of like, what? Because what? <laughs> you know? some of the topics that land and ask to be discussed or explored, I, I'm like completely confident. I'm like, oh, that's right up my alley. I'm in my element. Okay, cool. And others, I look at them and I kind of go, really? <laughs> And that was the case this week. I was like, really? Um, and the show was very big, much a yes. And so <laughs> today's today's conversation is not about really telling you what is supposed to be. Uh, really, none of my conversations are about that. It's really, for, it's me exploring what I know and inviting you uh, simultaneously to be coming along on this adventure and tapping into what you know. And I am going to give you some some information based on my experience, um, because this is really up in a lot of the conversations, has been coming up in a lot of the conversations and the sessions um, for some time now. And, and for a lot of us who are here right now and who are choosing to, to come play on this planet Earth playground with bodies, in bodies, um, there's something about portals, vortices, and thresholds there's something about the energies that are the unconventional ways of creation um, and creating that we actually came here to very much experience <laughs> and much more so than what we might think we came to experience them. So are you feeling like you have crossed into, maybe a little air quotes there, uh, new or uncharted territory with the new year, with the new decade, or maybe with your, your age, you know, because we have those conversations too and those very interesting theories um, with a, maybe a new place you're living and perhaps you have really actually it's highly likely that you have stepped through a portal or into a vortex or you've crossed a threshold or maybe you're in the process of that right now. And that could be a really powerful and empowering thing for you and that is my primary focus today. That really felt very strongly like what we wanted to lead with, is what are these things, what can they be, and where is the empowerment, and, and is that what we're willing to choose? So there's a lot of stories about portals and vortices and thresholds, and this is by no stretch of the imagination a scientifically based conversation. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> because while we can do really cool things in science and we can find and create really interesting um, information, and much of it very valuable and helpful, um, I don't rely upon science as the sole source of information or validation. Um, I'm, I'm not a big validator kind of thing, even though I've done my own share of, yes, I would love for things to be validated, I would love to be validated at times. And and what I get about that is that if I'm looking to have something validated, then within that, I'm already doubting me. I'm already doubting what I know. I'm already putting myself outside of my awareness. So I'm not, I'm much more in favor of, and I will much more often invite you to actually tap into what you know, even if it doesn't seem to make any sense, because I'm also not about making sense, because most of what we play with when we get into the non-physical world, when we are playing with the energy of connecting to the beyond, to the more of us, to the all that is, to the greater, to the infinite, that's not really explainable, and it certainly does not occur in a logical or linear structured way. <laughs> So so there you go, <clears throat> in case you did not know that about me. <laughs> so with portals and vortices, now vortices is the plural of vortex, 
so I'm just being kind of fancy there. Um, you can also say vortexes because, I mean, my gosh, we're in the 21st century. We can make up whatever words we want to, and we can say the words however we want to. And just a little codicil there, I will invite you and remind you, just be aware of the energy within the words of what you're saying <laughs> because that is a big part of creation. And that's it for that's for another conversation on a different show. So we've actually had some of those. If you want to look in the podcast lineup <laughs> or in the podcast library, there are some shows that I've done in the not-too-distant past um, talking about the language of energy. And um, we will get to explore more of that in the coming weeks. However, portals and vortices and thresholds, um, first of all, and I, I, I hear myself want to go, oh my, <laughs> at the end of that. So <laughs> if it is something that has been made to be scary or you know, if what you learned about these things was that you needed to be afraid of them because they are automatically a negative energy, that's the first thing I'm inviting you to consider shifting your perspective with. Um, I'm really big on shifting perspective and shattering limitation because that's kind of how we do it. So if you learned or if you were told or if you've bought the notion, the idea, the belief that a portal can only be a bad thing, like a gate to hell, <laughs> which of course I can laugh at now, um, or a vortex can only be a negative energy or that a threshold is um, uh, other than, like if you're literally talking about uh, a threshold on a doorway, on a physical doorway, yes, a threshold is that thing that is placed at the base of the door, like on the floor, that is a demarcation of one room to the other, right? However, there are also energetic thresholds and energetic portals and energetic vortexes. And really, we're going to be speaking a lot to the energy of things today. And... Uh, they can also be found in many of our physical um, expressions, in, in very many physical expressions in our world. So portals are also, you probably or you might have um, experienced some portals in nature. It's a big place where portals happen and where vortexes are are talked about and seen and played with. Nature is an abundant space of energy, <laughs> different kinds of energy, and different combinations of energies. And really, that's one thing that all three of these have in common, is combinations of energies are what give rise to these energetic portals, vortexes, and thresholds. Now, let's start with portals. <clears throat> so, <laughs> and if you have any questions that come up that you would like to bring to the show, I invite you to do that. Um, you would need to come to the Inspired Choices Network site, and you can click on the word chat room in the blue bar near the top of the screen and come on in to the chat room. Just enter whatever name you want as your login and get yourself on in and um, share your question. You can share it on the, in the virtual chat room, or you can actually come on the show live if you want to do that. But I really invite you and encourage you, if you have something that's popping for you during any of my shows, I invite you to come bring that question to the show. And if you can't be on the live show and you would still like to submit a question, I love that too. And you can do that by emailing me at the email that's listed on this podcast page. So portals, um, commonly associated as a gate. And if you go to one of my favorite references, the online etymology dictionary, um, it literally refers to a gate or gateway. Um, it's it's the, the base of the word, the root of the word, the energy of the word is gate. So it might come as no surprise that a portal is a form of a door, a form of an opening, right? It's different variations of something opening up. So in nature, there could be portals, um, you know, between a set of trees or among a set of trees, or literally a gate could be a physical portal, Um it can be stones. It can be a uh, certain formation of the land. It can be places where there is um, water that, uh, you know, a body of water shaped a certain way. Or a body of water in itself could be a portal. Okay? So 
part of what I really would like to offer you is that a portal in and of itself is simply a portal. <laughs> it's, it's not automatically good. It's not automatically bad. It's not automatically haunting. It's not automatically negative entities. It's not automatically really anything. It's just a portal. <laughs> so first of all, it's a portal. So how do we – it's not necessarily – a really important thing that you can find portals, see portals, have portals. What I'm noticing with a lot of the conversations coming up in my world and in my work is that more people are uh, bringing questions that reveal, you know, that as we're exploring them, we find that there are active portals on their property. And I'm going to say this, just for the sake of transparency, not to create concern, um, but also because I do a lot of work with bodies, uh, there are portals on bodies. Now, some of those are obvious, like your mouth. <laughs> Hello. So we all have a portal. There you go. Ta-da. So, <laughs> so if you were really worried, Hey, you don't have to worry. You have a portal. Ta-da! It doesn't have to be a big deal, right? Take a bite of food and appreciate the gateway for food to enter your body. <laughs> and you might also appreciate the gateway for um, material to leave your body when it's time for that to happen because otherwise things could get really uncomfortable. <laughs> so just, just a possibility there for you to consider. So, however, yes, there are other kinds of portals. And... So when we're talking about properties, they can be literally in the home, in the structure. They can be um, on the property. And usually that is the case. There's, there's active energy areas or active areas of energies that in the way they come together creates an opening, creates a portal. Now, portal also has to do with transporting in many cases. So... That's not to say that it has to be about that. But what I find usually to be the case is there is an energy, and in in a number of cases there are entities through which that uh, that portal – did I say that correctly? I don't think I said that correctly. There are energies and entities that can use that portal. And that's, again, neither automatically good or bad. So what is required – when we find a portal or when we think there might be a portal is some questions. <laughs> and if you use any type of muscle testing or if you use a pendulum, um, these are great ways to create your little kind of toolkit, whatever tools you want to utilize for this. Ask some questions. And one of the first questions you could ask is, is there a portal here? <laughs> or is there a portal located on this property? Or if you're talking about your body, is there a portal on my body? Does my body have portals? Now, before you ask this question, I'm just going to clarify, or I'm going to make an attempt to, that if you have a vested interest, if you have a deep-seated or unconscious belief or strong point of view that having a portal is a bad thing, that is the first thing that you want to play with. Because any of your muscle testing and any of your dowsing is highly influenced by your specific thoughts and beliefs and point of view and feelings. Okay? So your energy is a primary variable in the way information can come through your muscle testing and pendulum testing and any other form of energetic testing you might be doing. So if you feel like you're not quite ready to do that on your own, find someone who can do that from the space of neutral. So if you were to call someone like me, I can show up, I can ask the questions with you, and I, because of my filters being different, I have no investment that the portal is a good or bad thing. There's a different information that can come through. 
Okay, so that's just a, a little side note there. And it is really essential that you get that and that you play with that. So um, if it takes you a little time to get to the space or get to the place where you feel that neutrality, where you are in that neutral space and you've allowed yourself to let go of and, you know, release or whatever kind of work you want to do to be to get beyond those beliefs, those points of view, those stories <laughs> and those definitions. Um, if you're there, awesome. And if you're not, give yourself the time to get there. Now, if you feel like there's something critical going on, if you have an intuitive sensing that you need answers or you require answers sooner than you feel like you can get to the space of neutrality, please phone someone, email someone, <laughs> find someone <laughs> that you can come over, that you can have come over and work with you or that you can have work remotely with you because we don't always have to go be on the property to receive the information. A lot of this can be done remotely. So just some information for you to play with. Roll that around. And you can do that while we go to this break because uh, I think it's time for us all to take a breath. <laughs> this is some very interesting information for a lot of us. And oh, what what could we really allow to show up for us now? What awareness are we really willing and able to tap into? And how much more of our consciousness are we really ready to bring to the experiencing of our lives? And what is some information here that perhaps is is gold for us? So that's that's what we want to that's what we want to sift through this for. Get to the gold, right? Um, and if nothing else, I might say a few things that laugh. So <laughs> so come on back. You're listening to Aligning Divine. We're on the Inspired Choices Network on whatever platform you're playing with us through. And thank you for that. And we'll be right back. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of Aligning Divine. I am Keisha Clark. I am grateful you're coming to play today. And we're playing with portals, vortices, and thresholds. So if you're just joining us somehow um, and you want to go back and listen to the podcast from the beginning, you can totally do that on my podcast library page. Um, <laughs> and if you've been with us, thanks for coming back. Um, yeah, so portals are really fascinating. Portals can be in nature, on land, in space, and we can have portals 
we actually do have portals <laughs> on our bodies, okay? Um, so it feels like there's a little bit more about that. It's, it's something I would like to also share is that a portal can actually be something that contributes generatively. Now, you know generative is one of my favorite words. <laughs> so there can be portals that actually are a good thing to have on the property or active on the property, okay? And then there are portals, there are cases where portals can be more of a draining energy, more of a destructive energy and not not a good kind of destruction. <laughs> so sometimes we can do generative destruction, but in some cases it's not so generative. So, so that's the next question to ask when you're playing with the whole portal thing is, is this a generative portal? Is this portal a contribution to this property or to my body or to the people who dwell on this property? And you might want to have a few questions that you kind of pull together for that. So um, I have not come across any cases where a portal is generative for the property and not for the dwellers of the property. Okay, so typically what I find is that if it's, a good thing if it's a contribution to the property it also supports the people who dwell on the property um, I have not come across any cases where a portal with when we're talking about bodies that a portal is generative for a body and not for the being <laughs> so so if there's any worry that comes up for you about that it's I would say it's extremely rare if it is even a possibility because if you look at the vibrational matching or lining up of that, what would you create a body that has a portal that supports the body but not you for, right? So just something to play with there. Um, so, and again, no portal means any absolute. No portal is a good or bad thing just because it's there, okay? I do find in more cases than not that the portals are actually generative. And part of the way that really lands for me is it's kind of like energy, you know, the earth has to breathe, right? The atmosphere has to breathe. Even though we think of it as air, and you might be thinking, well, why would air have to breathe? <laughs> There's still movement. Everything is in motion constantly, right? Energy never stops moving. And... We are multidimensional beings. And while we might be thinking we're in a three-dimensional world, why would we have to worry about other dimensions? Well, you don't actually have to worry about them. However, a lot of us who are here to play right now, we're more aware of the multidimensional aspects of this environment, of, of our lives, and, the, and those capabilities that we bring, right, to be multidimensional beings. You want to talk about rainbow children, crystal children, um, all the beautiful names we might give it. It, it in part, refers to bringing more of, of an intensity of our gifts and our capacities that if we're not willing to acknowledge them and at least take them out and play with them a little bit, it could create some very uncomfortable things for us and often does. So at no point have I really come across um, – portals that are uh, devoted to something horrible. In many, many, many cases, it's a place for the property to breathe. It's a way for the body to actually bring in or bring through a, a generative energy. So I will share with you, <laughs> um, in case you've not heard about the toning that I do, um, it has come to be called Akash Toning. And it started for me around, ooh, I guess, four or five years ago now. Um, and for the first few years, I spent most of the time doing the toning in, without talking about it to the public <laughs> because I was still getting acquainted with it. And having the body that I co-created in this lifetime, um, I created a body that has portals, more so than just my mouth and a few other orifices, <laughs> the, the regular orifices, right? So part of my toning, part of the Akash toning, has it involves, uh, very much involves, um, a portal for me. And that portal is in my body. And so when I am toning, I am very much aware that that portal opens and that there is 
this amazing energy, this incredible vibration that flows very strongly when I'm honing. And um, I, I kind of had to work with that a little bit because it was not familiar to me in the way that the toning is done. Now, doing body work, I'm also accustomed to, um, you know, when we put our hands on someone, certain things, certain energies kind of turn on or activate. And so if you are in any aspect of what we could call the healing fields of work or the, the healing arena, this is something you might want to be looking at a little bit more or perhaps a lot more. Um, if you're having certain experiences with your body that are not pleasant, it is possible that you have portal capabilities with your body or that your body has portal capabilities, let's put it that way, that if you're not really um, utilizing or allowing to flow, it actually does create a destructive effect on your body because it's like you're fighting the energy. Now, that's not a good or bad thing. Again, it's just part of what I really love to look for and, and tap into is how do we do this in a way that works more efficiently, effectively, smoothly, and actually is generative for us, whatever that may be, whether it's organizing your closet or <laughs> doing your your body work or, you know, um, preparing a meal, right? That's not to say that I'm an expert on organization by any stretch of the imagination, but that's part of what I look for, and that's part of what uh, shows itself to me when I'm working with people. Um, and that's just something I kind of, it's it's fun for me. So, so if you are having some what we could call health issues, you might consider just looking at the possibilities that some of the things that appear to be an issue might be coming about in part due to this conflictual dynamic that's going on, that could be going on for you. And so again, questions would be the thing I would recommend. And usually most of us with our bodies, we're not able to be in a space of neutral when we ask those kinds of questions. So I highly encourage you to bring someone on board who can be in the space of neutral, who does not have an investment that bodies have to do certain things or things have to be a certain way for bodies. And let them be asking the questions to support you and get information for you. And then you take the information and you do what you need to do with it, okay? So um, that takes us to vortices or vortexes. <laughs> you can use either word. <laughs> and this is a bit – there is a difference that I get. Um, I know some of us, our brains might go to, uh, if you hear, if you've heard any of the Abraham Hicks uh, sessions, um, th they talk about getting in the vortex. Okay, now that is, that's a vortex, yes, 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 and it's a little different than what I'm going to talk about now. However, if you just kind of feel into that intuitively, you probably would sense that they have similarities. There's just a slightly different way when Abraham is talking about getting into the vortex. Um, there's a slight, there's a slightly different flavor. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. So vortexes, um, again, if we go to the online etymology dictionary, um, essentially it's a whirlpool. <laughs> and um, in the around the 1600, sometime during the 1600s, um, it commonly or typically, that's what it was referring to, like an eddy of water or wind or flame a whirlwind or a whirlpool. Now, you might be familiar with vortex energy in the form of different storms, like a cyclone or a uh, tornado or hurricane. Those are different, I don't know, they're not vastly different, but they're variations, they're, they're forms of vortexes or vortices. <laughs> and um, again, no good nor bad, no automatic good or bad, okay? It's, it's a way energy moves. And, again, it's a culmination of certain energies. So when we're talking about storms, I believe the way it's described is that when a mass of low pressure, I could be saying this backwards because I do a lot of things backwards, but 
when a mass of low pressure is uh, surrounded by uh, high pressure and creates a spin, okay? And that's what sets that vortex in motion. And so within the vortex, there's this really fascinating, to me anyway, this fascinating kind of juxtaposition of energies that they can't quite mesh. So they have a resistance, but within the, the resistance is within a field, right? It's within that vortexual occurrence. And it's really powerful, okay? Yes, thank you, Sailor. Um, Sailor's in the chat room, along with my fabulous producer, Rhonda. And in Sedona, which they're mentioned in the chat room, Sedona is known for uh, its vortexes. And there are other areas in on the planet that are well known for their vortexes. And the vortexes are very strong, very um, you could say we could we could call them constant because they're they're there. They don't really go away or dissipate. Um, so people travel to these places to experience them. And again, they can have a very healing influence. They can have very tumultuous influence. Um, they can have a very um, intense energy to them. Now, again, with our bodies, each of us is going to experience vortexes. In, a, in the way our bodies and we are going to experience it. It's not an automatic, it will do this for us. Now, if you're in the path of a hurricane, I'm going to say, get out of the way. <laughs> because you kind of know a hurricane is going to move some stuff around and leave a bit of destruction in its path. So please know that. Tornado, please know that. Yes, we're not being goofy here. There are certain times that you know certain things are very likely to happen with those types of vortexes, and we call them storms. Then when we come to energetic vortexes, um, it's again, it's a bringing together of different energies that create this spin. So rather than in the case of like with a portal, that it creates an opening and there might be this suspension of space, my words, my way of describing it. With a vortex, there's the spin. Now, the vortex creates a pull. It draws things into it. And if you've ever watched a tornado or a hurricane, you know what I'm talking about. It draws things in. And when we're talking about energetic vortexes, it's equally um, constructive. So it's not that vortexes are a bad thing to happen. Actually, vortexes can be a way of, of releasing pressure, can be a way of very quickly, very powerfully reconfiguring, shifting, transmuting energies. So if you're experiencing vortexes, this could be something that actually could be constructive for you. Um, can a vortex, can our bodies vortex? Yes, our bodies can vortex. In fact, Bodies actually have um, a, the way that their energies organically move, and typically it's a, it's a spinning type of energy. Now, again, not a scientific conversation, folks, so if that really bugs you, just please know <laughs> I'm asking you to soft the, the page of science for a moment and just lean into playing with the energy of this. I do think there's, there have been studies and articles and write-ups, but that really is not the intention of today's conversation. So if you want to find that, please do some research for yourself and satisfy that curiosity. Um, but with bodies, and again, this comes up in you know a lot of the different modalities of healing work. With bodies, yes, there is a spin, there is a vortex, and it does change in different times and situations. Okay? And again, it can really be conductive or constructive for um, shifting energy really quickly and dissipating energies really quickly. So when you're talking about in the healing work that, that we do, and if you are in the, in the field of healing work that you do, um, you could actually be utilizing this vortexual uh, occurrence. <laughs> um, to support the bodies you're working with and support your body. 
if it's a way for your body to let go of a massive amount of tension or pressure or energetic toxicity, whatever you want to call it, okay, if it's a way that your body can move that energy and allow it to move on and transmute, go like move to its next level of evolutionary whatever, then would you maybe consider starting to play with this? Okay. And again, it also draws energy in. So as it's moving these things out or reconfiguring, allowing it to really do its job or do its natural thing and bring in new energies, wow, what could that create for you, for your body, right? So we can have energetic vortexes with our bodies. We can have energetic we can have emotional vortexes. We can have um, vortexes that are fun and vortexes that are not so fun, okay? Vortexes of emotion, vortexes of, uh, oh, gosh, a place where you might apply this would be, I think they call it mob mentality, the mob phenomenon. You know, when you there's other ways to play with this, but if you look at that, when enough people in a space are – going in a certain emotional direction, that starts to pick up a charge and it starts to create a vortexual spin as well. And it can be very unpleasant, okay? So again, this is about using your awareness, tapping into what you know, tapping into your intuition. And again, if you already have this investment that a vortex is a certain thing, the first step before you play with vortexing or vortexes is going to be to get to neutral about that, okay? So, wow, vortexes! <laughs> and yes, every time you pull the plug on a sink of water, like, or in your bathtub, or when you're doing dishes, if anybody does hand wash their dishes anymore, I do, but I don't know how many people do anymore, when it goes down the drain, it creates a vortex too. So, yes, vortexes are everywhere, and they can actually be really productive. So I'm going to let you play with that when we go to the next, well, we go to the next break and take another breath. And then we're going to land at thresholds when we come back. And then we're going to bring all of this together um, and play with some questions to, uh, to send you out into the world today. So you are here with me, and I'm so grateful. We're on Aligning Divine on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back. <laughs> Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of Aligning Divine. I'm Keisha Clark still <laughs> and we are playing with some Fabulous portals, vortexing and vortices, vortices <laughs> and thresholds today. Um, wow, I'm cracking myself up here because, you know, I shared at the start of the show that uh, when this topic landed and wanted to be played with, I was kind of like, huh? <laughs> and I'm just having such a good time sharing this with you. And I sincerely desire and hope that this is bringing you some new awareness, some new questions to play with, some new possibilities, because um, that's really what it's all about, you know. And and really, each of our shows is like a portal and possibly a vortex <laughs> and can also lead us to a threshold. Um, so let's dive into thresholds. And if any of, any of this is bringing up questions for you, please share them. I love to get your questions. I love to uh, support 
with whatever additional information or resources that I can share, and if it's something that's bringing up things in a way that you might require a session or a series of sessions, um, please reach out. If, if working with me or the idea of working with me doesn't blow your hair back, there are plenty of people. I just invite and encourage you to reach out and choose sessions. <laughs> so it's about getting out of the place that you might not want to be or out of the place that isn't really working for you. And thresholds, that kind of is a beautiful segue, because thresholds, um, as I said earlier, they can literally, well, they are in one way, literally that thing on the floor at the base of doorways that is a demarcation from one room to another. Um, so in a you know, as a contractor, as a working in construction kind of aspects or applications, it's um, they come in handy because you know you have different kinds of flooring. You might have carpeting in one room or hardwood flooring in another room, and so it they meet at the doorway. And the threshold is something that smooths over the seam of the separation of the flooring and creates a, a nice little something for you to step over. Okay, so. A threshold also, however, and I have to read this because I I copied it because I was so fascinated by it. And then we have a question in the chat room I'm going to jump into. So, all right, with a threshold, also, the magnitude or intensity that must be exceeded for a certain reaction, phenomenon, result, or condition to occur or be manifested. You could also say actualized, for those of you who might not like the word manifested. So... Let's get that because that's really where thresholds apply for this conversation and how they apply for this conversation. And in a lot of my, you know, I was just at the Dallas Psychic Fair for our first fair of 2020. Thank you to everybody who came to play um, this past Sunday. And so uh, in a number of those conversations, what came up in the course of the dialogue was that people are really – at the threshold, they're ready to cross it. And what was going on in many of those cases is, or was, and really is, um, they were at this place where they were reaching that maximum intensity. They were reaching the level of intensity that was really required to kind of pop them through. Okay, my wording. <laughs> Nothing really fancy there. But that really is how I play with thresholds. And we can have a ton of thresholds in our existence, in our lifetime. Every day could be a threshold, you know. Um, that can be with changing habits, changing physical or behavioral habits. And that can also be with different energies, working in different intensities of energies. So, again, thresholds are nothing to be worried about. Again, there's not a good or bad automatically going on with thresholds. They can often be, and really in pretty much all of the cases I play with thresholds, it's actually a, just a part of our progression. It's a part of our reconfiguring and transmuting and uh, moving through, moving into. You know, and we were recently enjoying uh, fabulous conversations in the series that I was doing, Resolve to Evolve, which will continue throughout this year with different conversations. And evolution is about unfolding. To evolve is to unfold. And really, what what would we come here for if it wasn't to like play with that, right? To get to know ourselves. You know, I think there's a there's several famous quotes that have to do with the universe seeking to know itself. We are the universe seeking to know itself. Um, so when it comes to thresholds, again, if you're having a series of intensities or if you find yourself in a really intense space, are you at a threshold? And would you allow the intensity to just grow and build and would you be willing to be with it and allow the information to come through not try to hold it in your body, not try to figure out what to do with it, not try to make it do something, not try to restrain it or contain it, but actually allow the energy to move. So maybe ask your body to vortex and it will help you move through that intensity 
to go through that threshold, to cross that threshold. And the thing about thresholds is it's like graduating steps, if you will, right? So you, you cross these thresholds, and you're in a new space, and you don't ever have to go back to where you were. That's kind of a cool thing to me. <laughs> I mean, we can always choose that, but we don't have to, right? So let's look at this question we have. Uh, so what are the exit for? Clones are closed. Guardians are moved. And demons are cleared. Hmm. Is it coming from a little relief? I can feel better to have them closed. Hmm. Okay. So the question is referring to some of the, I think some of the clearings and the some of the clearing work in Access Consciousness, which is a, a body of work I have played with and many of my peeps play with. Many of you might do that. Um, I'm just intuitively feeling into the question, and what I get is when you encounter a portal that is not generative, so you've asked your questions, you've gotten your information, and if, it, if for some reason it's not generative, um, then you can actually do things, you can take the steps to close the portal. And of course, first I would ask, because <laughs> you don't want to get into a battle. But close the portal, remove the beings who have been put there to guard it or keep it active. I think that might be what you're asking. Um, and yes, it could be coming from a particular point of view. And if you feel better not having active portals, then ask some questions. Um, you know, I say play with more questions because that's really my default. Ask some questions about the steps you can take. Okay, And yes, you can call upon your team of beings of light to support you to receive information of either how to be with that portal in a way, for example, if it's on your property, how to be in the energy of that, around the energy of that, if closing it is not really an optimal choice. You can ask how to be with that energy. And you can ask what your body requires to be able to have ease with that. And there are some other things which go into a little bit more of an advance. So if you want to email me for that, um, if you require more, we can play there. But I get a sense that it's not really uh, it's not really time to go into that on this show. So anybody, if you're listening and you want to do that too, you can totally do that. <laughs> Just email me. Um, so thank you for that, Sailor. Yeah. Beautiful question and awesome awareness. And hey, what do you, what potency do you have with portals that you haven't acknowledged? What potency do you have with energy that you haven't acknowledged? Hello. <laughs> Maybe some of that. So, so bringing all of this together because we're just about done for today's conversation. We'll we'll leave you at a sort of jumping point. Um, really, part of what would like to be shared is uh, the invitation. And really, anything can be a portal. Anything can create a vortex. And everywhere, every space, every moment, you can have a threshold that you're crossing. It all comes to what do you want to do with this? And how much of your awareness are you willing to have about the energy of your space and your body and your being? And when we talk about lining up, what would allow you to, to be in greater alignment what would you what would allow you to be aligning consistently and just having that dance of body self and soul energy and what is supportive for that what do you require so what can transport or move you from this moment to the next in a way that really works for you my friends and how can you use portals vortices and thresholds to support you through that movement, into it, through it, and beyond, actually. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for coming to play. Come back next week. We got a whole lot more, and it's going to be a great year. Until then, have as much fun as you can have, lining up and living your essence Thank every day. Thank you for day. listening to Aligning Divine Radio Show. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your essence.